to me, the Keltman was always this thing that was very mysterious and like a million miles away. It was almost like I was too scared to even say it out loud. I'm going to do that one day. For anyone that doesn't know it, it's it's an extreme triathlon, so it's not quite an iron distance triathlon, but like you probably get some people that argue and go it's not the exact same. It's harder, it's much harder because of the elevation, the conditions, the weather can be very, very unexpected as well. It's a 3.4 kilometer swim in open water, which is very cold. It's full of jellyfish. And the cycle is a 202 kilometer loop um, with about 8,000 feet of elevation in it. Some, some monster climbs in there. And then it's a mountain marathon at the end with two different loops. So that is what an extreme Scottish triathlon is. That is the Kelvin. It's been a it's been a hell of a day to be honest man. Like one of the biggest things we've been saying is that we probably could have came down the day before because this day it's been like a 300, 300 odd miles of driving. Had to sort everything out, had to go to obviously the race briefings and stuff, get to this accommodation which is in the arse end of the world, it's absolutely beautiful but and I'm kind of at the point right now with training where I have felt very very fatigued recently so aye, it's uh, time, to, time to go man but the work's been done now so aye, feeling good. Basically just getting kit ready, um, so obviously it's like 20 to 8 right now so it's an early start the morning, I'll be up about 10 to 3 or something in the morning so just getting everything ordered, we went for a full kit check and basically there's loads of stuff that you need for this, it's all mandatory so you have to have like a compass, whistle, lots of little things that usually when you do a lot of races like I'll be honest I've done a lot of different races like this and they can sometimes skim it but they're like you will not get past this point if you don't have X, Y or Z and it goes the same for Joe that's going to be my support runner as well so it's a lot of kit because when you get onto the hills at the end after like nine plus hours of being on a bike and being in the water it's a long day so you need to take your, your safety seriously so i've got my my warm weather tri suit here and what i'm going to do for the cycle is depending on whether it's hot like today or it's a bit chilly or i'm absolutely freezing i can shove on a cycling jacket a long sleeve top or a short sleeve top and then i'll have all my food tucked into the back for this as well and then i can just come out the water and I just crack on with it but that's pretty much everything I think for the cycle. I just need to get my kit bag ready now for the run because I just cannot not have anything that's not in that list, otherwise they don't let you pass. We're just making a kettle of pasta for tomorrow, so he's having tomorrow, chicken tomorrow. pesto pasta and he's also having salmon and pea pasta salad. Um, pretty much just because it was going to be the easiest thing for him to eat on the go that doesn't have to be hit up, it's going to taste quite good and that's got plenty of carbs in it as well. Then so the main thing now is make a bit of that. So that will all go into there. I think my kit will probably be tri suit, um, waterproof and then my backpack on over the top of it. So plan for the morning, so we're going to basically go for a bit of a strategy right and now we're on nutrition go through it. So obviously like Joe loves to say this is an eating competition and that's exactly what it is. It's a fucking eating competition, you eat as much food as you can. And the way I like to see it when it comes to making sure that you're, you're in a good spot is imagine like your carbs are like in a pint glass. You want them to be tipping over the edge before you've even started. So when I wake up, I'm going to be smashing like 70 grams of oats. We don't actually start the swim until 5am. So then 60 minutes before, we'll be smashing a gel as well. And then post-swim will probably be another gel because you'll then be kind of 70, 75 yeah. minutes in. Um, some fluid just to rehydrate off the back of um, yeah, being in the swim. Uh, and then like from there, it will then be pretty much anywhere between kind of like 90 to 120. So you layer it. So basically the first hour will be 30 grams of carbohydrates. Second hour will then be 60 grams of carbohydrates. Third hour, 90 grams. Four hours will then be 120 grams. And then off the back of that, from about five, six hours onwards, it's literally just going to be calories. And it's just going to now come down to obviously how Christian's feeling because squares bars are fantastic, gels are fantastic, but there's only so much of those that you can now eat. And then also we can have a strategy and a plan, but it would just depend upon obviously how you're feeling more so than, more so than anything else. Yeah. Waking up at 10 to 3, 
Ten, 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 
it's the best my nutrition's ever been on a session. But like actually having your coach there was just different level because it was like it took that part of thinking away from it. Although I was conscious and I had a plan, it was just like do this, do that, and it it it, it really really made how I performed on the day so much better. Hey, my name is Joe Parrish. I have been Christian's coach for the last two and a half, coming on three years inside the High Performance Coach. So this morning, Christian was actually incredibly relaxed. Yesterday, a little bit apprehensive, just I think with the logistics and just making sure that kit check and uh, everything in terms of checking was good to go, uh, but really quiet and a very chilled evening last night. And then actually this morning was in incredible spirits. Uh, beautiful morning, aside from the midges. And uh, yeah, he was looking strong, uh, feeling really, really good, especially coming out the water. Uh, hit around 67 minutes, which I think um, is ahead of schedule uh, in terms of where we predicted and wanted him to be. Uh, really Hydrated, a little bit of food, and now he's uh, on his way. First 30k in, uh, so we're just about to go and give him a little bit of caffeine. Right. Just under a quarter of the way through the cycle. We oh, just, I don't know, somewhere a bit there, but just coming up to a quarter. But aye, we're good. The first ten miles was pretty hard. It was a bit of an up uphill climbing. My legs were still obviously the height. The water that I drank obviously still hadn't. I don't know how it works. I'm not a biologist, but worked its magic yet. So my legs were still tight and sore. My my hamstrings and my glutes were like I mean just like a searing pain. But I knew from experience that forty minutes to an hour that would be away. Then once I set off, like got ch talking to a couple of people out on passing and stuff like that, so my energy was picking up a lot more. And, like I just had like a bit of a state of like euphoria. Like I was like I just felt so good and Let's go. breathtaking. You're going around part of the NC500, which is just like this breathtaking route. It's a 125 mile loop, 202 kilometers, and every part of it is just spectacular. Having the support there was different levels as well, and I had espresso, got some food on board, um, made sure my nutrition was on point, and off I went. So the first 40 miles were strong, like really, really, probably the best 40 miles of cycling I've probably ever had in the sense that how, how efficient I was on the bike. I've had a lot of injuries, I've had sessions that I've missed, and I was just really happy with the performance for the first part. I was on the bike for like nine hours. You need a lot of food. You need to have lots of water. You need to have like, a, like we had a backup bike. We had everything. And obviously I had mom, dad, Ailey, my best mate Grant, Lewis came up from Joe. And it was just, it was unbelievable. From the route, it was unbelievable. I was excited to see it. every time you just pass by, you'd be videoing, or you I was just buzzing about it. Uh, so Christian is first and foremost in this incredible part of the world, uh, which is absolutely spectacular, especially when the sun is shining. He's around 55 miles in, and uh, we've just actually chased him up a hill. Uh, his energy was fantastic. We obviously had a little feed and a, a little food stop, and uh, that's definitely given him a huge boost. So uh, he's almost now halfway in. We're around kind of four hours into the bike. Yeah, he's in a really good place. We've just stopped for half an hour or so just to grab some food and catch up and let him get a few miles ahead. And uh, we'll go and uh, hunt him down in a few moments time. I'm not eating fine yet. Oh, fuck man. I'm struggling man. Come grab a seat. Do you want a seat? Yeah, yeah. I would honestly say that the cycle, the 202k loop that day yesterday was harder than the Ironman that I completed. We keep saying how amazing it was. No, fucking, it's not easy in my head. No, I don't think <laughs> it's easy. But no, no, my, my body feels good, but 
Does this mean you get in your head, man? <coughs> we had first 30, 40 miles were good. And then for 50 miles, we got battled with, I think it was like a 45, 50 mile headwind that really, really broke me. Like it absolutely broke me. And there was a point where I genuinely, like I never really understood the, the magnitude of what we were doing, but I was just genuinely like, this is what makes it extreme. Oh, that fucking wind, mate. The past 30 miles have just been wicked. Like actually like relentless. So, 75 miles. I feel like I got halfway and it's just went like so slow. I know. He's got an ammo, we keep chipping away. You're 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 o'clock, my friend. Go on, go on, crack on, brother. And it reached highs of 30, 29 degrees, I think, at some point, which there was a few hills that was going up where legs were screaming at me. Um, I was dehydrated. The wind had gone because I was moving at like six miles per hour or seven miles per hour off a steep climb. The sun was just baking me. And I knew from looking at the map that I was on this straight for a while. And I started doing the maths and I started working it out. I'm not going to hit this on time because you need to get to T2, which is the bike changeover for 4 p.m. And my plan was to do this cycle in eight hours. Like if I had a really good day, which we thought it could have been because of the weather, but we 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 misinterpreted that. There was still wind. There was still like I almost kind of let my guard down a bit. I was like, oh, the weather's good. The wind, it it traumatised me. It, it really, really made me question. Like, I'm like, I'm vlogging this. Like, I've got all my family here. Like, what happens if I don't do this? Like, I might not do this. You should have done more work. You should have done this. And it was like the level of self-talk. It was, it was consuming. It was fucking consuming, and it was awful. And I remember actually being like, this is one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. And I remember just thinking, you have chose this. Just, just like a good four hours of negativity. I just done it and I just I just focused on the one stride at a time, get my nutrition good, stay hydrated, do the things that I can do, and I just accepted it. I just accepted the situation, so. Oh, let's go, mate. Thank God that is over. Be careful, mate. So we'd made it by like 25 minutes for the cutoff, but then when I got there, I was just hollowed out by that cycle. I just needed some time to not be doing anything, like even though I was like, I could go right now. I think it was 40 mile headwind. I think I'd done 10 mile an hour for like fucking 3 hours. That's crazy man. <sighs> I'm good for it then, but I'm just fucking very tired. Big dog, how are you? Tired man. Okay? Yeah, I'm very tired. Well right. done. Two and a half hours mate. To get to, what's the point? T2A. How long is that? 18k. 18k. Half marathon, just under. Cool, right, can do this. Can do it. Uh. I thought the first part wasn't that, again, down to my own fault, I didn't read the race manual. I knew that it gets really, really hilly after like T2A, which is the transition to the last point where the cutoff point is. So if you don't make it to there in under 11 or 13 hours, 11 for the high route, 13 hours for the low route, you're not allowed to finish the race. It's up to half marathon. Hey, look, give me the legs. It's all right, man. Yeah, I don't know how. Lewis came for that part of the support run and we horsed it. Like I gave it everything to get there. As we were going through uh, that point as well, one of the things, it was like psychological warfare for me because I didn't know if it was 17 or 21K. And if it was 21K, I don't think we would have made it. We've all got a, a GPS tracker on and it's so that everyone can track you, that a live tracker. And I didn't realise that mine's died. Um, not through any fault of my own, it's died. Um, and obviously the support team, um, and Drew can vouch for this as well, like it, uh, four miles in, I think it was. I just went off the radar. Uh, how are you, team? What's good? It is uh, one minute to five just now. We're currently parked in a lay-by. Uh, Christian is currently ascending a pretty big hill, we believe. Uh, we think he's got around an hour uh, before the T2A cutoff, and then obviously off the back of that, um, I don't think they'll let us go around the mountain. So uh, we're just currently waiting to see where he is and obviously try and get a little bit of an update. We think he's probably still uh, around 10K away at this present moment in time. Most importantly, we're hoping that he's okay. Yeah. 
No, he's literally just walking up the path just now. Um, but yeah, we, we came in and, and everyone was like elated to see us and obviously they were elated to see us every time. And as I ran up to everyone, they were like, we thought you were out, we thought you were out of the race. There was so many points during it, like folk, you see the highlight reel and you see the, the smiles from me and stuff, but there was so many like, like self-doubt on steroids, like just like, just so much self-doubt that was so consuming. Yeah, really tired man, very, very tired now. I'm, uh, I've still got um, 15.4 miles to go, so 25k. I'm so now man. So this is the cut off, so we actually made it here by 15 minutes. So if, you, if you didn't get here for 6pm, you're out of the race, so we made it. So 15 minutes to spare, so pleasant. He's just drained. He's just he's just completely fucked at this stage. But what's he got? A bit more than a half marathon left to bag. He's got the food. He's got Joe. He's got hydration. He's got he's he's past the time. So he just needs to finish it. That's all he needs to do. He can, as you said, do shuffle, walk, run. He can do anything he wants. He could crawl if he can if that's what he has to do. But he's going to make it now, which is which is a good part. So it will be a Kelpman. One hour 55 to do 17 half K and I don't even know what the elevation was. It was ridiculous. But someone said the average for that coming at that point is about two and a half hours and we've done it in 150, 155, 157. So as you can imagine, we left it out there to do that after 200 K cycle, 3.4 K swim. It was, it's hard. The plan was, it was basically going to be, we decided it's going to be a bit of a yomp. We just had all our kit on and we were like, because you, you have to carry a decent amount of kit and stuff as well. We set off and was chatting to Joe and it was just on a nice flat road. And there's a, a low route and a high route. And I knew that from all the vlogs, all the research that I'd done, and even from looking at the map, I knew that the low was not appropriately named. It's not low. But when I seen that we were climbing a mountain, I was, I was in a bit of shock. So you see those guys there? So we take a right, you see them there, look? Yeah. They're walking, they're walking down, down it. Are they going up there, look? Yeah, yeah. So that's where we're going now. That's a river? Yeah. Fucking yeah. hell, man, it's yeah. still high, isn't it? Yeah. No way. That can't be it. I think we covered two and a half thousand feet over it. So like just shy of a Monroe. It was, it was a hell of a climb. We didn't run from there all the way to the summit. One foot in front of the other, dude. Just shut it down and just allow yourself to go wherever your mind wants to go. I would set the pace, then Joe would set the pace, but we were moving, we were like power hiking. 13 in. What? 13, yeah? 13. Halfway. So just fucking different. Just make don't, don't go fucking crazy. Yeah. And as it flattened out at the top, we really, really were shifting. And then as things began to level off, again, we were asking people how far is left. And we, we got told 6K by like three different people that were all at least two to three kilometers apart. So we'd been chasing those 6K left for like every time. So it was like nobody ever knew the distances. And again, that was getting to your head. But then we seen the lock that we swam through and all, that was like the, let's go. And we just ran, I think we ran about the last sort of 10 to 11k and then we just finished it so strong.
over. You're just so tired, and I just getting to the end there. Like I actually started welling up just as I seen it, and I just seen like do you know what I mean like running with my coach, two best mates there. They ran the VM bit and ran in, and Ailey was there, and I just cuddled Ailey, and the mom and dad at the Sky was there, and then it's just very emotional, and it's like it's almost like a bit of a wee out of body experience because you're like I've wanted this moment for so long. And, and, and the people made it. It was just just to support the connection with everyone else, that it was incredible. Um, and crossing that line was just, it's just brilliant. I've done it, I've done it. And the reason why I get so emotional at the end, because I remember seeing that race years ago and going, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And I think when you do these things, I said to Joe, I went, it almost reinforces the person that you want to be for the things that you do. And doing stuff like that, that not a lot of folk can do, and it requires so much work, so much dedication. That just summarises it. You just change. You just change and you become a fucking different person through the process of doing shit like this. And that's what I love about it. So that is my summary of the Kelvin. When you do something that you go to a new level, and you tap into areas that you didn't think was possible, that like you've you've got the right to be emotional because you know that you've went into this like box to the unknown and, and to have my mum and dad there, Ailey there, and just just special. Do you know what I mean? It was really, really good. Hey. hey. Finish up. It's official now. I think it's it's a it's a race for people that are really, really serious about doing the work because there's no way that you could hide from that. It's the absolute evidence that I am who I say I am and who I want to be. That's what it is to me.